In this video, we're going to graph two of the basic trig functions. We're going to graph sine and cosine, and look at the domain and range of sine and cosine. First of all, let's go back to graphing something we're more familiar with. For instance, a linear function. Let's take y equals 2x plus 2. We would come up with an xy chart, and for instance, if I plugged in x is equal to 0, y would be, let's see, 2 times 0 plus 2, that would be 2, and that would lead to the point 0 comma 2. And I've graphed it on the screen. Let's do another point, let's do 1. If x is equal to 1, then y, 2 times 1 plus 2, y is equal to 4. And that leads to the point 1 comma 4. And again, I've graphed that. Finally, let's look at negative 1. Well, if I have x is equal to negative 1, that leads to y equaling negative 2 plus 2, or 0. Again, I can graph that point and connect the line, and I have graphed my linear function. And a little bit of review, we also can talk about the domain and the range of a function. Remember, the domain are all the possible input values you can have, and the range are all the possible outputs this function can have. My inputs are x, and there's no limit on my inputs. I can have any number from negative infinity to positive infinity. I've written this, by the way, in interval form. The range is the same way. There is no limit on my range. There's no limit on what my y value can be. So the range for this function is negative infinity comma infinity. All right, let's go and graph quadratic functions. We'll say y equals x squared. Actually, I'm going to be fancier than that. I'm going to actually put this in function notation, f of x is equal to x squared. So our input is x, and our output, f of x, is y. This should all hopefully be review. If x is 0, y is 0. If x is 1 or negative 1, the output is 1. And if x is 2 or negative 2, the output is 4. And those points connected together give me a quadratic function. It's a parabola. Now the domain for this one, again, there's no limit on what I can put in as an x for this function. However, no matter what I do, no matter what x I choose, I can't have a negative value of y. So my range is the point 0 up to positive infinity. Notice I've used a bracket next to the 0. That means you can actually equal the point 0 in my range. But you can never get to infinity, so we use a parenthesis for the endpoint. 